Welcome to Star Trek Infinite. My name is Acepec, and today we'll be going over some of the basics of the game. If you go in and you try to play around with things, it can be a little bit overwhelming, which is why I'm going to take you by the hand today and walk you through some of the systems and essentially the basics of the game and how to get started and how to continue onwards towards victory. Now, there is, of course, four factions at the start of the game. You get the UNE, you got the Klingon Empire, you got the Romulan Star Empire, and the Cardassians. Uh, for this one, we'll be going with the United Federation of Planets because it is probably the easiest ones to go into. Now, the United Federation of Planets is rather interesting in terms of that it cannot go to war, but it does have other bonuses, such as it has a lot of focus on science and as well as exploration. We'll get into that as we go. So let's jump into a game, see how we get there, and see what our objectives are. As we start the game, you will be presented with this particular screen, and essentially we get a little bit of background about our empire. We're just going to go ahead and engage and immediately turn off the tutorial because I think it is, in fact, annoying. This is the initial screen. Uh, it seems a little bit, uh, bit busy. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's this thing called an outliner. There's this pause button. There's a whole bunch of icons in the top. Don't worry, we'll be going over all of this stuff in due uh, time. But first, we're going to need to go over what we do at the start of the game. Well, first of all, we need to go to the mission tree. The mission tree is a system within the game that essentially allows us to guide our progress within the game. It gives us objectives to work towards, and it gives us bonuses and rewards as we go through those objectives. Starting all the way at the start of the game, where no one has, uh, where no one has gone before, where we start to explore, all the way down to some of the other things like I don't know, we reembold. Um, section 31 or we uh, exterminate the Borg for instance that's apparently a thing uh, there are some trees here that uh, are mutually exclusive but in general the, 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 it's fairly straightforward however first of all the very first thing that we need to do is figure out what the very first step is because with this particular step we can get the additional bonuses of uh, getting anomalies and we are the federation we want to explore as much as possible how do we get this well first we need to get two science ships and we need to survey 10 systems that's a relatively straightforward so that's the very first thing that we are going to be doing so we're going to go to our shipyard and we are going to go and click on this tab down here and we're going to figure out okay we need to get a sign ship well we need 75 um alloys basically uh yeah to build our sign ship and that is something we don't have at the moment which is problematic because uh you know we can't do one of the steps until we have that resource however in the other side we do have a sign ship down here that we can select it's a nice little Orbis class ship and um, it's ready to go out on an adventure with our uh, scientists now because we are in our solar system right now we can also go to the galaxy map by hitting the M button or this icon at the bottom of the screen for Star Trek Infinite, the focus is mostly in the Alpha and the Beta Quadrants, which means that there are the four major powers, the Klingon Empire, the Romulan Star Empire, the Cardassian Union, and of course, ourselves. But obviously, we've already had the indication of, hey, we need to start surveying systems, we need to get 10 systems surveyed. And as we have our science ship already enabled, we can see that there's a bunch of systems that we haven't surveyed yet, which is really cool. So what we can do here is, is go to the survey button, click that then hit the shift key and right click on one of these systems we're going to go and queue these up and basically say okay we need 10 of these systems that we need to survey we're going to do that in between the uh the romulans and the klingons and basically start surveying as many systems as we can uh, until we can no longer add anything to the queue anymore so basically that is the gist right now we're just queuing things up it's going nice and swimmingly until we can no longer queue things up anymore we're now at our max because there are a hundred objects that don't need to be surveyed so that already has 10 systems uh which would uh, be enough for our first objective which is great and we just need to get a uh, 75 alloys in order to build that initial uh science ship but can we get that amount well yes we can because we can click on the icon and just straight up buy um a bunch of alloys we just hit uh, 25 three times and there you go we just bought a bunch of alloys using our energy now energy is one of the resources within the game we got energy deuterium minerals food alloys and a bunch of additionals as well that we'll go over later however um 
basically this is what allows us to build the things that we need to build and because we've now bought those resources we can immediately go to uh sp space dock one click on a science ship put that in the queue and that will now be built and we haven't even unpaused the game yet Yes, there's a pause button. But wait, there is more. Because we are the Federation, we need to also start thinking ahead a little bit. What is the next thing in our list of things to do? Well, we need to get some anomalies uh, surveyed. That's fairly straightforward. Uh, we need to make uh, contact with minor powers. We'll be talking about that shortly. And then we need to start uh, bringing those minor powers into the fold. So basically, we need to grow the Federation or empower Section 31, but we need to assimilate minor powers into our stuff. Now, we already have the Betazoid houses to the galactic south of us, so let's we click on them and you. improve relationships with them. Yes, we are going to... Uh, we will not be able to assign an envoy for another 360 days. Right, Kitamero Quartz, that's the thing. Uh, we, we, that can wait. That, that can wait. It's fine. Whilst we wait on that, we have to wait one year. In the meantime, we can just select our science. Uh, we got three science options. We got ourselves physics, society, and engineering. In general, we always want to go for research speed or uh, research output. But in general, research speed is quite good. If we can get anything involving... If there's anything that you don't want, then just go for a cheapest option. Because the tech tree is randomized. So basically, you get a range of, say... 10 different things that are on this tech level and right now we have three of those 10 so if we finish one of these there's nine left but they're still randomized so we will if there's nothing that we want then we want to go for the cheapest thing because then we can cycle our science so in this particular case let's go for heritage site and in this particular case let's go for building cost reduction because buildings are expensive and we want to make sure that uh, we actually do that stuff all right, with that out of the way, do we unpause yet? No, we do not. We have to take a look at what we actually have available in terms of expansion within our empire. We got the Denobula and we got Ryza. These are two M-class planets. We got a Gaia world over here and a Tundra world, uh, M-class world. We will want to colonize those, but can we colonize those? Well, we click on them, we click on colonize, and no, we do not have the alloys or the food for those. So that's a problem. So what do we do? Well, we need to obviously get food. We need to get alloys, and how do we generate those? Well, we are going to designate our worlds to be focused on generating those resources. First of all, let's take a look at Andoria. This is the planetary screen. Basically, this is where all of the resource management within the game happens. All the resources go into a generalized pool. There is no persistence. Uh, there is no particular like strategic resources all over the map um, in like dumps and stuff. No, it's all global. So basically, we can see here that this place, Andoria, has got a lot of agricultural districts, but already has a bunch of energy districts attached to it as well. We can go to Vulcan. Uh, it also has a bunch of uh, agricultural districts and energy districts. Those are resources, obviously. And Talar, which is uh, focused on food and energy yet again. Not a lot of mining so far. So we're going to go to Andorra. Uh, Andoria. And whilst we would want to immediately go for an energy district here to, folk, to make this an energy world, basically, it is the planet that has the most mining districts on it, which means that this is a perfect candidate for a mining world. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click on no designation, click on mining worlds, and basically set this as a place that will generate minerals uh, for us. Obviously, right now it's not optimized for it, but it will be in the future once we get all these mining districts up and running. Vulcan, in the meantime, as I mentioned, has a lot more uh, food districts, so we're going to go ahead and set this as an agricultural world. And then finally, we're going to send Telar Prime as a energy world. So then all that stuff will be covered. We got our base resources, our energy, our deuterium, uh, sorry, our minerals and our food sorted. Those will be generated on these worlds. It's very important at the start of the game that we set that because we get additional bonuses and it allows us to better define how we want to develop our planets. If you want to get these icons changed, by the way, you can hit the little cog and hit the uh, little button down here. It's the uh, designation icons. So I like to have it on uh, to see which... Uh, which designations I've got on the world, rather than just a picture of the planet. Cool. With all that stuff out of the way, it's finally time to hit the space bar. Because we cannot send any politicians out just yet, even though that's an important part 
of the game. Now we hit space or we hit play and basically immediately we get a bunch of things that says we got a causes belly. We got independence being supported. Oh my god, there is so much stuff instantly going on. And this may be a little bit overwhelming. It's okay. Just read through it. For instance, right now we can see that independence has been supported by the R Romulan Star Empire to the Bajoran Republic. We will do the same because Go the Bajorans on. are really important to us. Uh, why? Because, well, if you've ever watched Deep Space Nine, you know that Bajor is a very, very important place. Also, they're being repressed by the Cardassians, and that is just not very cash money. So, yeah, the, the, the Romulans are doing the same. The Klingons, they're just sitting over there, they're just declaring war on whatever is back here, basically. So, let the uh, clock tick up, and we will start to get through a bunch of things. Because we have the aftershock of the Kittimer uh, Accords, or the Kittimer event, basically. Kittimer is this, uh, this system over here. It was uh, originally, I believe, a Klingon colony, then it got raided by the Romulans, and basically the Kittimer Accords came out of that, and like a whole bunch of shenanigans. Basically means that we cannot hire any spies at the moment. To understand you. Meanwhile, the Betazoids, they, uh, they want to uh, get an uh, embassy with us, which is great. We actually want to get embassies with as many people as possible. In particular, the Romulans. The Romulans are very, very important for the Federation. Uh, but that's more of a uh, acceptance. Okay, cool. That's fine. But we need to essentially make sure that yeah, the is at the Ashes of Kittimer. There's a bunch of events in the game that basically moves the plot forward. Uh, basically, we want to be proactive as the Federation. Um, as much as possible because we want to get as many friends as we can. We also have the um, the USS Cerritos, uh, which is a second contact uh, thing. Basically, it allows us to uh, improve relations with other empires, which is great for us. Um, if you've watched Below Decks, you know exactly what the Cerritos is. Anyway, uh, everybody is now supporting independence of the Bajoran Republic. That's great. The Romulans want an embassy. That's awesome, even though they will try to spy on us. But in the meantime, we can we send? You. Yes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on the beta Zs and improve relations with them. We will set send a um, an envoy out, and basically they will improve things with us. In addition, what we can also do, we can request a mission from them, which will vastly improve our standing with them, which is really nice. I also forgot about something else. Governorships. So, governors live on ships, apparently, in this universe. So, there he is. Uh, or at least, there they are. Uh, this is a governorship, and basically what it does is it goes from planet to planet, and you can give it uh, those planets bonuses. So, what we have here is that we can go ahead and click on Earth uh, with uh, our governor uh, selected. If we can just uh, get the camera to work. And immediately we're going to go ahead and set it to improve worker production. Why do we want to w uh, improve worker production? Well, because we're at the start of the game. Our basic resources are our priority. So that's something that we are going to have this Even governor work on. You can hire more governors throughout this screen down here. And basically it will allow us to boost our production on different worlds. There's one governor per planet. Don't deal with it too much right now because it does cost a bunch of resources. How is our science ship doing in the meantime? Well, our science ship is at Wolf 359. If you are a Star Trek fan, that uh, name should give you shivers down your spine. Anyway, what we're going to be doing here is, is we're going to send uh, our construction ship to... Do we send it to Wolf 359? No, we're going to wait because we need the science ship to survey it first. But in the meantime, though, we're going to send our construction ship... Uh, to say the Ryza system, we're going to hold shift again, right click, and we're going to build mining stations. Now, mining stations are basically um, stations that will mine these resources in space using mines. That's why they're called mining stations. And we want to construct all of these as fast as we can and basically make sure that we have all those resources in our pockets. So very important stuff that we've got all this stuff queued up. Uh, we don't want to do science stations just yet. It's pretty expensive, so we can, we can do it, but just add it at the end of the queue uh, at the moment and then see what we can get out of it. But in general, we want to make sure that we just do the mining stations first before the science stations. All right. So, the Kittimer Accords are moving forward. Do you have to figure out yet we that the Romulans are behind things? No, they have not. So that's unfortunate. In the meantime, the, uh, the Betazoids, they want to do a research agreement, which we are going to definitely agree with. Uh, because we want to be their friends as much as possible. Everybody is uh, supporting Bajor, which is nice. We There's the research agreement. That's good. 
And basically at this point, we're just uh, slowly but steadily moving forward. Uh, and we can also, uh, if we want to, uh, for instance, our science ship has been done. We can go ahead and uh, recruit another scientist, but we don't have enough money. So what we can do is uh, we go to, say, the food department right here. We just sell a bunch of our food until we get to, get to a thousand. We're not there quite yet, so we're going to go and sell some minerals while we are at it. We now have enough food, so we're just going to go ahead and send this here. Uh, recruit a scientist. These icons are not really all that important for uh, for explorers. Sometimes they are, but usually it's more for um, scientists in general. In this particular case, data coma is quite useful. Anomaly discovery chance is always really nice to have at a high rating. So we're going to go ahead and select that scientist. And we're just going to go ahead and do the whole survey thing yet again. Select survey, hit shift, and we're going to go ahead and start serving in the other direction. Now, what is our primary goal here with all this surveying? Well, we want to find other empires, uh, minor powers in particular, but we also want to find as many anomalies as we can, just so that we can get this mission tree objective going, because that is our priority. So you can see we now have two science ships, we just need to survey 10 more systems, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, at this point, obviously, the game may run a little bit slow, which is unfortunate. In the meantime, we are going to send a ambassador Jalan to Drew. the Romulans, because the Romulans are very important to us, uh, because, uh, because of reasons that will happen later. We can also do a non-aggression pact, but I'm not going to do that at this moment in time, because it does cost a resource, of which we don't have a lot. It's called influence, and we need to get that up to 50, because we need uh, influence to start building star bases and expand our territory. Anytime meantime, we found an anomaly at Wolf 359. Uh, these are just little events on the map, and uh, we can go ahead and survey all of that stuff and basically explore the universe and have stories. That's the main part of playing the Federation. The Federation is all about exploring the galaxy, what is out there. Uh, the Cardassians are all about suppressing everybody they can, uh, making slaves, build a massive economy because essentially they're reptiles on a, a resource-starved world. The Romulans are all about spying and making sure their home world doesn't blow up, and the Klingons, well, they just, you know, uh, when you have a hammer, everything seems to be a nail sort of situation. Yes, they will go to war, and they've got special systems specifically uh, for going to war, but because this is not the TOS era, they are our friends, of course, right up to the point where um, they will try to do naughty stuff. As you can see, the game is running a little bit slow. There's not a lot of stuff happening. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, first of all, we're going to send the Cerritos. Can we actually send the Cerritos out at the moment? Uh, it is technically a science ship, I would guess. Essentially a free science ship, which is nice. Uh, we do not have enough resources to recruit a scientist at the moment, which is unfortunate. So the Cerritos will have to sit there for a little bit. Uh, it's actually very interesting to see here, because the Cerritos is a combat ship, but it's also a science ship at the same time. Plus it can do the, um, the second contact system, which is uh, something that's rather unique to the game, uh, which I thought was rather curious. Anyway, uh, let's uh, move on. We can get a Genesis device out of this. It doesn't really do much for us. But in general, we always want to go for this resource if we can. This resource is called Unity. Unity will bring us forward in terms of our culture, our systems, what we stand for, and that sort of thing. Resources, if you can get them, is nice. But always go for Unity or Science, if you can, from Anomalies. It's very, very helpful to have because Science, you don't have that much of. All right, let's uh, send things into overdrive. Let's set it to fastest uh, times 1.5. Basically, time will now move forward. Every single every single tick is one day. And uh, now we're just waiting for everything to res start resolving in on itself. Like Wall 359 being surveyed. And a migration treaty from the Betazoid houses, which is awesome. Let's take a look at how our status is here with the, the Betazoids. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get to the proposed integration process with them. Uh, basically, uh, what happens there is if we integrate them into our empire, uh, we will get their unique civic. So basically, they have a civic within their empire. And basically, what that means is, is that that will be added to our own. Essentially, civics are these things uh, now up here. Right now, we got uh, diplomatic expertise and high education. Every single nation that we integrate will add an additional one of those civics. Basically, we stack global modifiers for every single empire that we integrate. The more that we have, the better. It's very much like Pokemon, except we use Galaxy-class uh, battleships. 
another event. Let's uh, research that. It's all going very smoothly here. And now maybe it's time to uh, take a look at uh, what our other stuff is doing. So overall, Earth seems to be fine. And Dora seems to be fine. Vulcan seems to be fine. And Telar seems to be fine. Uh, how do I know this? Well, as you can see, there is this little icon here. Internal Eclipse. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dig. Um, as you can see here, we have two available jobs. That's good, because we always want to make sure that this number stays as close to zero as possible, whereas the current un unemployment also needs to stay as close to zero as possible. How do we avoid that this goes too high or this goes too high? Well, we need to make sure that we have enough jobs available, and we need to make sure that we build sparingly. Every single one of these will create jobs, like city districts will create clerks, um, industrial districts will create artisans and metallurgists, energy districts will create technicians, miners, uh, farmers, and uh, entertainers. Uh, basically, every single one of those are jobs that they generate. They cause minerals and resources to, to build. We do not, don't want to overbuild these, because if we do, we will have too many jobs available that they can grow into, but we want to avoid that as much as possible. In addition, there's also buildings, which are more advanced things we will go into once we get a little bit closer to that. But uh, yeah, Earth will be a good example for that later on once we get a little bit closer. Good. It's time for our very first tradition. Traditions are used uh, by getting unity. And as I said earlier, we can get unity from output, from buildings, or from interactions within the galaxy, that sort of thing. But traditions are essentially what drives our society forward. It allows us to specialize our society in a way that you wouldn't really expect. So, as the Federation, we have our own little tree. Uh, basically, we can get uh, material abundance or we can get pioneers that increases pop growth speed and all that stuff basically every single thing that you would normally think that the federation would stand for however uh, for the federation in particular uh, this is not necessarily the best thing to go for uh, for the federation in particular uh, we want to go down the research path why do we want to go down the research path well we are all about exploration and we want to go for undoubted, uh, undaunted exploration because surveying an inhabitable world will give us three times the research that we're already generating, which will boost our science through the roof. So we actually want to go through the research tree and then go for empiricism. Uh, once all that stuff is done, then we'll go down the, uh, the Federation line. Anyway, let's adopt this. Uh, we will immediately get a bonus because we will get an anomaly sp research speed bonus, which is awesome. And... Uh, all of our planets will also increase in size, apparently, once we finish this tree. So, accepted. that's cool. Anyway, for every single world that we will now survey, as long as it's habitable, we will get a boost in science, which is awesome, and it's one of the best things that you can do as a as, as uh, any empire. Science is the way to go. Alright, we've surveyed the Wolf 359. The Betazoids want a protection pact. That is fine. Wolf 359 is looking good. There's a planet over here. It is a M-class size 12, which is good. And apparently we have also discovered something called highways, uh, which are effectively uh, trans-warp corridors. Uh, we will get to that shortly. But essentially there are these black holes, and they are high called highway nodes, and they basically connect different parts of the galaxy together. Why do they connect things together? Well, it has to do with the fact that the system of FTL within the game, and I will illustrate that by using my fleet, uh, basically we can warp to all of these locations using our fleet. That's not very far. However, if we use a uh, transwarp conduit, we can just go to the next location as long as we've discovered it. So, right now, our ships can only go within this range. Uh, there's uh, basically a, a straight line that we can go to with all these locations and just bypass everything. We cannot go beyond this point at the moment. Through technologies and better uh, equipment, we can over time. And as, a, as our borders increase, we'll have range. Uh, but as right now, in order to get outside of this area, we need to use the transwarp conduits, or highway nodes, as they're called here. Science ships are not uh, limited by this. They can go anywhere because they're basically independent units. But uh, yeah, that's something to uh, keep an eye on. Uh, in addition to that, like uh, right now, we've got Miranda class for some reason at this point of the game. You know, the, the Miranda class. What a crazy design. Um... Yeah, it has the roll bar on the back. That's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, later on in the game, if you play your cards right, these will be replaced with Defiant classes, so that's nice. Uh, the classes for the Federation are the Miranda, the Intrepid, the Excelsior, 
the galaxy and the sovereign and then of course the defiant as well uh, down the line cool how are we doing with our mission so far we have surveyed three out of ten systems so that's our still our goal we want to survey as much as we can and we want to keep an eye on our ships as well so that we keep on surveying we can also go to space dock number one uh, life is our greatest treasure uh, get another science ship out because we need to start keep on surveying however this is a bit of a double-edged sword because one of the other missions that we have as the federation is to build the first galaxy class ship it's so ironically not called the uss galaxy we want to build the enterprise d there's a whole chain of stuff attached to this but basically we need a bunch of alloys to build this galaxy class and it's a, a star cruiser which means it can both go into combat and it's also a survey ship and we want to make sure that we keep a certain part of the galaxy pretty clear for our upcoming galaxy class to start surveying because it needs to be able to get back to earth quite quickly in a pinch all right mining stations plus 10 percent on our new technology is great mining stations in space obviously as we already mentioned will generate a lot of additional resources we are already on influence so now it's time to start expanding we're actually going to go ahead and uh take a look at where we can expand to well wall 359 is obviously a great place to expand to but we've got all the stuff queued up aspect like what are we going to do here like we're not going to ruin this this production queue true true um obviously shift clicking creates a queue but if we shift control click and then right click here and then create a, a left right click and then click on starbase it will be prioritized in the queue so right now this science ship uh will uh, the science ship this construction ship will go to vol 359 immediately but it will con uh, retain its queue which means that you don't New have to redo all that stuff anymore cool the queue has been uh yeah we're gonna give the logs to the klingons we want to be their friends um it's time for another science physics in this particular case and there's a couple of things that are really interesting here which is fast track to training officer production every ship needs officers uh, if we don't have enough officers for our ships, our ships will not operate well. So, for instance, if we look at this ship here, the USS Dauntless, it's got 110 officers, I believe. Yeah, it's got 110 officers on board. Uh, if we don't have enough officers on this ship, uh, it won't work. It's basically a resource that can go up and down. You will be generating those. It's kind of like a manpower pool that you will be training throughout. We don't care about those people on the lower decks. They're just grunts. We don't care about them, like the on uh like like the chiefs and the stuff like that we want officers right so those officers are just being generated at starfleet academy back on earth we can put more academies in other places but we want to make sure that this number gets pretty high because we need a pretty large fleet for what is coming let's get some more um New let's get some more resources here cool ship upkeep auxiliary impulse drive and nebula uh, always minerals from uh minerals from mining space stations if you can Daggers get it talk money howls let's get the klingons on board with us and we get another tradition cool we can now go for undaunted exploration which is excellent try to go for undaunted exploration if you can found followed by uh, empiricism all the other stuff is not really important we got a curl on nascos uh we're gonna go and display that because we get science for it which is really important uh you will get some like tv related like tv show related references throughout we got subspace uh, stuff here like do we go for society or do we go for science well society ironically uh unity is a resource that we don't have enough of but it is also time to start colonizing so let's colonize this world let's only make sure that humans are on this world the nobula that's good and we just uh we're now automatically building a uh, ship which is great we'll do the same thing for wall 359 if we can founder species only we don't have enough food so what do we do well obviously we buy a thousand food and then just do it like this and then we got i believe one more sh one more here in ryza which you can colonize uh, it's got a lot of pop growth which is really nice too again we need more food which is problematic so let's sell some of our resources off uh, in order to buy more food if we can we kind of want to avoid selling alloys alloys are really important so we don't want to sell those if we can avoid it but right now uh we're just building two colony ships for those two systems which is fine Alrighty, more curl on nest cars and all that stuff being found here uh, let's increase some of our warp speed one our, we have another science ship ready so we can get our mission really quickly we need a couple more resources here um yeah that's a bit of a problem 
Okay, we need a thousand energy, which is a lot, so we need to get another scientist on this. I don't know why I got another science, why I built another science ship, because we've got the Cerritos, but that's like a whole different thing. And we've managed to survey another system, which is great. Cool. Memory Alpha, and basically we Mission need Alpha. to... Okay, that's the Cthulhu. Like, these events, I'm going to skip all this stuff, because otherwise uh, it's spoilers for you guys. And system surveyed down to 7 to 10 uh, is moving very swimmingly. All right, time for economy. As you can see, uh, Sol right now has his little red suitcase sitting next to uh, it in the outliner, which is a problem because it is a resource. It basically means that we don't have enough people working, which is, I've, as I mentioned, an issue. So how do we resolve this? Well, we can build buildings and other things. Because this is our capital world, we have a capital uh, designation. It means that we can get additional stability, amenities, etc. Usually you use your capital to round out your resources. What do we need right now? Well, we don't need much of anything at the moment, which means that we can go for science, but we need more um, minerals for that. So how do we get more minerals? Well, we are going to buy them, of course, and uh, we'll just get 500. We'll go to Earth again, open a building slot, hit the little research button. Uh, you can just go through the list if you really want to and just look for it, but I find it easier to use these icons on the top here and just look for research laboratories because you need more research laboratories. If you see if you see your, your, uh, your planets and you see this list and you see an open slot and you don't know what to build, build a research laboratory. You need science. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. It's very important that you do. All right, the colony ships are moving to both 359 and the Nobula, which is great. I think Ryza, we can probably can get sorted very soon as well. Let's just get that going. There we go. We'll send uh, some Andorians over there. And immediately all the other planets are in the same boat. Uh, but this is also where our specializations come in. So we can build a mining district over here. And because it's a mining world, we'll get additional minerals from this. This Vulcan is an arid world, but we need to get a more... Uh, we can get food from this place. Uh, we'll just send some deuterium. Yeah, we'll sell some, some deuterium to get more uh, minerals because we need minerals to continue building. Uh, if pops don't work, they will be very unhappy. So we need to get one more. Market takes over. Cool, we get empiricism because we get another tradition. We get some more technology from mining stations, reveal all uh, warp uh, highway nodes, which is nice, but expense 6,500. I'd rather go for the cheap one because it means we can roll over our science. All those other si options will come back sooner rather than later. Jolan True. We want a non-aggression pact and the Betazoids we are ready to go for integration. So we will propose integration with them. We'll see whether or not they agree. They are. They want to integrate with us, which is awesome. So we will scroll all the way to the bottom, start integration process, and we will send our envoy to that. And now basically our envoy will start bringing the Betazoid houses within our, frame, uh, within our frame, which is awesome. And that's basically the overall loop of the game. You expand, you research, you find things. Uh, as the Federation, you integrate other empires within your uh, space. And overall, the final goal is to become the winner on January 1st, 26, uh, on 2646. Right now, the Cardassians will win, which is an issue. But we need to get better than them. Uh, basically, how can we do that? We can get more science, we need more uh, techn technological strength. We need more colonies, etc. We need to be the best possible empire that we can be and become uh, basically the winners. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is survey three more systems and then we can wrap up this little overview here. All right, fast forward a little bit. Uh, We're almost there with the last bit. We've only got two more systems to go. However, there is a couple of things that I want to bring up here before we continue. Uh, at the bottom of the resource bar is the empire stability, the empire spread, the amount of envoys that we have, the amount of population, and the officers as we talked about before. This one over here, spread, is very important. It refers to our administrative capacity. Basically, we want to make sure that the left number is never higher than the right number. 
You can kind of play around with it and offset it by building more sci uh, science buildings, etc. But we can build administrative buildings to make sure that this, uh, this number is always um, working a little bit for us. Because if the left number is higher than the right number, we will be starting to be hit with overextension and basically everything will cost more. Technology will cost more, leaders will cost more, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, Pops will also migrate to other empires if our... Um, if our uh, if we're overextended, which is problematic. How can we do this? Well, we can go ahead and build a administration office. So we're going to go do that, and basically what will happen is we will get additional administrators, which are under the jobs. Oh my God! Look at that giant list of things. Uh, it's not important right now. Basically, we can automate all this stuff, and essentially uh, we can go ahead and say, uh, yeah, get us some more administrators. Jolan True. Cool. All right, New technology, technology more deuterium, too many blockers, uh, sure, and other events. Mission log updated. Cool, uh, foundries is nice. We just got ourselves a pact, Jolan defensive true. pact with the Romulan Star Empire is great. We want to be the Romulans, as, be friends with the Romulans as much as possible. Again, I'm just going for these events because I know what they do, but I don't want to spoil anything for you. Sweet, another tradition, uh, which means that we can go down the tree. We want to go. Uh, we've in the meantime, I've unlocked this one. Uh, ad additional admin tradition cap is exactly. nice. There you go, and the admin cap is now being offset. Very nice. Let's uh, get some blockers out of the way. Blockers are on planets. There we go. Alrighty, mission tree is finished. So uh, we are a couple of years into the game. And now we can go and finish our first mission. Uh, we have two scientists. We've surveyed 10 systems. We will finish this mission and we will get additional anomalies. And we will be able to research them even faster. Which is excellent. Now uh, we go on to the next mission. We need to find more anomalies. And we need to build the Enterprise. That is, the, of course, the Galaxy-class Star Cruiser that we need to get. But that's basically the foundations of Infinite. Uh, all the systems that we have played with today will get you to where you need to go. And obviously there is a lot more stuff. Like we didn't even talk about the market. Uh, we didn't even talk about the, the in-depth side of the market. We didn't talk about the uh, the edicts and policies, even though they are objectively pretty darn important. The fleet manager didn't talk about that at all. If you're interested, we can talk about that a little bit more next time. And uh, there is a link here on the right side of the screen for you to go a little bit more in depth. We'll go in about economy, we'll go in about policies and everything that is attached to that. But we will do it from the perspective of a different empire. Namely, the Cardassians. Until next time, my name is Ben Acevic. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, have a good one and see you out there.